Professor Malas, our next speaker is Professor Ashraf Mansour, again from United States, who will address to us ruptures of the Riva. Ashraf. Thank you, Dr. Abu Rahman. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, very nice conference. And uh, I'm going to pick up where Dr. Malas uh, left off in terms of uh, what happens after you do an endovascular aortic aneurysm repair. I don't have any disclosures in, in this uh, discussion. The biggest problem with endovascular aortic repair is that approximately 1% of patients will come back with a rupture at some point in the follow-up. The CAT scan on the left shows a patient uh, with a ruptured aneurysm with a large uh, retroperitoneal hematoma. <clears throat> so the first question we ask is, what are the predisposing factors for somebody to rupture after an EBAR? We know that a very large abdominal aortic aneurysm, greater than eight centimeters. We know that elderly patients, usually because they have tortuous arteries. We know that if you have a type one or type three endoleak, that's a predisposing factor. And then also the most important thing is graft migration. So in follow-up, we not only need to look at the size of the sac, but just the position of the endograft that you put in. Also, we know that the older prototypes for endovascular repair, such as the anurex, are more prone to migration. So the facts are that ruptured aortic aneurysms occur after uh, EVAR. We know that the incidence is there. We know that the only way to detect it is by following patients closely. And then what I'll cover in a couple minutes is how do we treat this? So the benefit of EVAR is that, as Dr. Malas has showed you, is that initially the benefit is that the mortality rate from the repair is lower. However, in the long-term follow-up, the incidence of rupture and intervention is, in my view, sometimes unacceptably high. And this is a graph from the European Journal of Surgery a few years ago, but it shows that in the beginning, 1994 and 1995, there are almost zero ruptures from EVAR. But as more and more surgeons do EVAR, the number of ruptures are increasing in the literature and the reports about them the same. And as you can tell here, <clears throat> the num and this is just like 10 years ago, but what happens is that in the United States, over 80% of patients end up with an endovascular graft. So, the, can we predict this? Is, it, is there a way to look at our patients and say, this patient is more likely to rupture? Well, obviously, what Dr. Malas pointed to is the fact that if you have a, a difficult neck or a hostile neck, that is probably one of the most important predisposing factors. We know also that the ruptures after endovascular repair tend to occur in the first two to four years after repair. When we look at the causes of rupture, the most common thing is that an endoleak is detected or a migration of the graft is seen. Sometimes the grafts, especially the old prototypes, will disconnect at the junction. And in some patients, either the iliac artery or the proximal neck would dilate, and that also causes failure. Uh, so when you look at all the patients that are reported about uh, rupture after endovascular repair, you can see that every type of endoleak is implicated but the most common types are type 1A and type 1B, obviously. Uh, that's proximal and distal. <clears throat> uh, the type 1 is the highest risk, as you can see from this graph. So in, the, in one of the reports that was uh, uh, published a few years ago, it looked at patients uh, that had an EVAR and the behavior of the proximal neck. And what we've seen is that the proximal neck has a tendency to dilate, and this, I think, has been an issue with us uh, uh, selecting the endovascular graft for patients, trying to oversize by 20% to compensate for this. Well, <clears throat> late rupture uh, can happen, and this is a systematic review from the literature, and it shows that, uh, that the majority of the ruptures can be, in fact, treated with another endovascular repair. And this is a, just a list of all the available grafts that have been talked about. And you can see at the top that the anurex, which is no longer available in the United States, is one of the most common uh, grafts to uh, cause rupture in patients. In this study that uh, came from uh, Britain, uh, they followed 848 patients in their series, and they had uh, 27 patients come in with a rupture, 
in the average follow-up of about five years. And about half the patients had an open repair and they let 15 patients expire. So when you look at uh, the causes of rupture, uh, or what is an indication, what is a, a sign that you can see in the patient and follow up that might tell you that this patient is at high risk for potentially rupturing? Well, sac growth is the first thing. Endoleak, uh, type one endoleak and type two endoleaks are probably the two uh, other factors that you need to look at. So when you took at all the patients that had EBAR, roughly 80% remain stable, and about 15 to 20% will come back for a re-intervention, and as I mentioned, about 1% will rupture. So what do you do when they rupture? Well, we looked at our series. Uh, this has been updated, and we're now up to 24 patients who've uh, presented with rupture after uh, endovascular repair. You see that there were 14 patients, but 16 ruptures because two of the patients came back twice with a rupture, once on the right side and once on the left side. And you can see here, these are the types of endoleaks that we detected in these patients. And um, type one and type two are, um, uh, type two actually is, is quite uh, small. The sm numbers are quite small. So how do we fix them? In 14 patients, we were able to do a redo EBAR. And two of those patients ended up uh, dying in follow-up. In one patient, we did a thrombectomy and a femoral femoral and one patient was allowed to die. So the outcomes, we had 90% of the patients had another endovascular repair, but the mortality from rupture after EBAR is not zero. As you can see here, one of, the, one of five patients will end up dying from a complication. And in fact, when you look at the large series, this was a, one of the largest series in the literature reported from the Cleveland Clinic uh, over a long period of time. They had over 100 cases and you can see here, these are the types of endoleaks that uh, occur. And uh, the uh, infection is obviously another thing that we will uh, talk about at some point in this uh, uh, conference, but the mortality is fairly significant. At 30 days, 17% of the patients will end up dying. And- uh, Professor uh, Mansour, less than one minute. Yes, sir, summary. The, uh, so, to summarize, the rupture after EVAR is a recognized problem. The best option is to do another EVAR uh, because the explantation is an operation that is, uh, is quite difficult and complicated. The prognosis of these patients is a little bit uh, worse than patients who uh, present for elective surgery, but similar to patients who present with a rupture in the first time. The key is close surveillance is mandatory and that surgeons should be aware of the type of endoleak that puts the patient at risk of rupture. Thank you for your attention.